Hello guys, today we're going to be working on this French door GE refrigerator. This refrigerator is made by Samsung, so this repair applies for all Samsung French door models. The model number is on the display. Welcome to DIY Repair Now. Read all the warnings. And during this video, you will see one or more of these icons to help you do this repair safe. The first thing we need to do is disconnect the refrigerator to avoid electric shock. But I'm going to leave it plugged in for the purpose of this video because of the lighting. Now we're going to remove the two fillet screws. We remove this cap to be able to remove the fillet screw that is behind that is holding this bracket that holds the racks and the drawers in place. Sometimes you're going to have to wiggle it out and manage to be able to remove it. I recommend to start with the bottom and then wiggle it until it comes out. Sometimes you're gonna have to pull out and use the drill. Now we're gonna remove the two filler screws in the bottom, and now we're gonna have access. Now, let me tell you something. My recommendation, if it doesn't come out easy, will be to disconnect the refrigerator and let it thaw out. Do not use this putty knife like I'm doing it. The reason why I'm doing it is because I came to this house the day before and I defrost this whole panel, which it took me hours to defrost. So my suggestion will be go ahead and disconnect it for 24 hours because you have to let all this ice that is built up behind the panel thaw out. And I found this little bit of ice there. So this repair will take care of that issue too in case you having that frost around there too now after we remove the panel we're going to go ahead and disconnect all the wiring go ahead and take pictures before you remove any wiring to remember how it goes after we remove the panel we're going to go ahead and defrost like i told you um, all the ice build up. I came the day before and it took me, like I said, hours to defrost it. Sometimes you will find frost around here and you will have to replace that clip because the clip that comes from manufacturing is too short. I already have replaced the clip um, like a year before. So that is not an issue this time. But if you have in a drain line clog, you will have to replace the clip. I'm gonna go ahead and link it in the description down below. This is how the panel was the day before I came to defrost it. Now I'm just using my steamer to defrost any little bit of ice that is around it. Sometimes you will find ice around this vent too. This vent goes to the bottom drawers that you see right there. This is the part that we're gonna be installing today. This is a heater. Samsung makes a heater by manufacturing but it's a little pricey you can find it in amazon this is how it looks and this is how it looks uh, when it's already installed and this is the one i want to be installing today which is an aftermarket made by subco i use this for years and it works really good for me this is how it looks pictures from amazon and this is pretty much how much is it and we're around between 15 and 20 dollars you can also find a link in the description for the original one from samsung but as you saw in that picture most of the time it is not available so this is how i use this heater i'm gonna go ahead and install this heater around here and the thing is that what happened all the ice gets built up because of the fan motor hot air gets around the fan motor and it start building up ice so this heater what it's gonna do is every time the bottom heater turns on this heater will turn on as well in a hot temperature to defrost any build up ice around the uh, fan motor now i'm going to secure this heat element with this zip ties the zip ties are special for high temperatures as you see in this footage it would take even 185 degrees and i suggest to use this high temperature um zip ties because if you use the regular ones it might pop off i don't think nothing 
major is going to happen by my recommendation is use this just for uh, precaution i'm going to go ahead and link these zip ties as well in the description down below and you can get it from there maybe it should be amazon i'm going to go ahead and secure um all this area with the zip ties and just make sure you secure it around the tube because that's where all the ice gets built up as you saw in the previous footage i'm gonna go ahead and leave pretty much all the details and how do i use it what i'm doing now is just protecting the area where the solder is between the copper and the aluminum it's a solder there because these coils are made for aluminum but the tubing going into the cabinet of the refrigerator is copper so i don't want any temperature around that area so i put a little bit of rubber um piece that i found in my tool bag it's not necessary i find a lot of people just you know put the heat element the heat element itself brings like a piece of rubber so if you don't find any anything made out of rubber around and to put around that area just go ahead and use um, anything else for example like high temperature um, electrical tape which i'm going to go ahead and link one in the description down below as well in case you want to get everything that you need to prevent this area for keep freezing up i'm telling you i did this repair i have done this repair many times and it does work now i'm securing yes to be on the safe side this little piece of wires in case those zip ties fail it's just something that i do but i never had a go back nobody called back saying that it's not working this is the best solution to prevent this fan from keep freezing up the reason why this area keeps freezing up and it frees up the coils is because ice gets around the fan motor and then it freezes everything else again take pictures before you remove any wiring to remember where everything goes now every time i do this repair i also recommend to replace this thermistor because this thermistor is one of the most common things that goes bad in this model however i already have replaced this one in a previous repair that's why you don't see me doing it on this one now we're going to find the wiring that goes to the heat element This is the wiring that goes to the heat element at the bottom. You will see another heat element at the bottom. And this is what we're going to do. We're just going to go ahead and hook up our new heat element to the existing heat element wiring. So, again, when the bottom heat element comes on, this top heat element will come on as well. Again, I have done this repair many times, and this is the best solution to prevent this fan for keep freezing up i'm gonna go ahead and link a a couple more videos in the description down below where i've done this repair in different ways like different ways to connect this um connections right here the wiring connections the videos on my channel will look like this you can watch those two videos and it will help you and you can choose which way you want to do it so this is the best way that I found because I trust this connection with the wire nuts better than um, the other connection that I've done in the other video. However, that way it did work too, but uh, for some reason I feel more comfortable with these connections when I use wire nuts. Just make sure you twist the wires um, until you have a good connection and then go ahead and put the wire nut to protect it from any uh, water to go in or moisture um, go ahead and install the second wire now before that go ahead and twist the wires as well now I was twisting the wires here and then I used the wire knot but I kind of realized that I feel the wire kind of short 
at this point i didn't know if my connection the harness or uh, terminals was going to reach where it should go so as you can see right now i'm trying to adjust the wires i even remove a zip tie in the back that that zip tie was already there for manufacturing and this is what i was saying that this is the only thing that i don't like about this connection with the wire nuts that now the harness is going to be too tight if we're trying to plug that in on the top so it, those wire nuts might get loose at least one of the wires i feel that is kind of tight so as you can see it's not reaching where it needs to go i keep trying trying to adjust the wires i'm trying to see if there's anything that i can do and even if I'm able to plug that in, um, I feel that it's gonna be too much tension on the wiring. As you see, I'm trying to see if I can get more wire from over here, but it is too tight. So I'm gonna have to decide if I have to add a piece of wire. Um, either way, I have some wire left you can see in my other video that I'm recommending that is going to be linked that your connection for the um, heat element in the Samsung models could be in the other side as well. Now, I decided here that I'm going to add another piece of wire. That way, the connection is not going to be too tight. So since I already cut a piece off, um, as you saw in the beginning of the video, over here, I'm just adding a piece. That way it reaches better. The only thing is this way, I'm not gonna have only two connections. I'm gonna have three connections, which, you know, I don't like it if it's not necessarily, but again, go and check my other video and you choose which way you wanna do it. Again, my um, recommendation is use wire knots the way I'm doing it in this video, but you, make your choice now as you can see i'm adding some extra wiring and now i'm able to make it reach as you see i got three wires and yeah it looks like yeah you're gonna have to add another piece to be able to make it reach into the top just to make sure to let you know uh, just follow the video if you want to put this video in low speed you can do that to be able to watch it um, a more slow but i also put silicone after i do the connections on the wire knots that way no water or humidity gets inside those connections and it's gonna be a uh, issue later on so you see just put the silicone i'm gonna go ahead and link this silicone in the description down below but you can find the silicone at home depot um, by the way, I recommend to use this type of silicone because this silicone is the only one that I found that it would dry even in low temperatures, like when it's cold in the refrigerator. The other silicones, they are not uh, low temperatures, uh, will not dry or it will take months to dry. So. I will link this one in the description down below. Got one more. And as you see right there, just put inside the wire knot. This is not going to affect any connections instead of um, it will help, you know, to prevent any humidity gets in there. Now, because I found a little bit of ice, um, like I showed you at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and put some silicone around here. But this is a step that you, if, you don't not, if you don't have any ice around this area, you don't really have to do that. Just so you know. This is the ice that I found. And like I said, I have done this repair months ago. Customer never called back. So that means, or either the heat element take care of the issue or the silicone seal this piece and prevent that ice from keep building up. Remember that if you have a drain line clogged, you have to defrost it. 
like I told you at the beginning of the video, because otherwise it's going to keep dripping water. I also put another uh, little bit of silicone around this corner to match with the silicone that I have put in the refrigerator. Just manage to put it um, with your finger, you know, nothing fancy. Now we're going to go ahead and put this panel back in place. If the, um, if you see any more ice building up before you put anything, go ahead and defrost any ice that is around the fan motor as well, because the ice will keep, um, blocking the fan from spinning. What I do most of the time when it's summer, I take this panel outside and put it on the sun and it will defrost any ice build up. Again, my suggestion, disconnect the refrigerator for 24 hours. Let it thaw out. Make sure all the ice is melt because if you don't do that and it's ice inside this panel around the fan motor or the cabinet, it will go back and do the same thing again. I receive a lot of comments sometimes when people say, well, it keeps doing the same thing. Well, if you don't follow the instructions, if you don't follow the video and my recommendations, you might as well leave it alone because um, it will keep happening. So 24 hours with the door open to let it thaw out. And if you still see ice, let it go for a couple more hours until everything is thawed out. As you see, I'm just making sure it's sealed. I install those two screws on the bottom. All right, guys, if this video helped you in any way, you can show us appreciation by giving us a tip using the following options that you see on the screen. If you cannot provide with a tip, is another way to support this channel by just dropping off a comment in the comment section down below. Subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up and turn on the bell to receive notifications. Thanks for watching.